31, let's take a look at the definitions for local minima and local maxima. And I just want to point out, sometimes you'll hear these referred to as relative mins and relative max. All right, so we actually have two vocab terms. We have local min, local max, and relative min, relative max. And when we get to the last example uh, in, this, in this section, we'll actually talk about uh, absolute max and min, or sometimes they're referred to as global maxes and min. So we have two vocab terms that mean the same thing. So again, this, this is much like the increasing, decreasing intervals definition. It's, it looks convoluted, but we're gonna stare it down and try and make sense out of all of this notation. So a function f has a local maximum if at x equals b, excuse me, at x equals b, if there exists an open interval a to c, where b is between a and c, such that for any value, for any x in that interval, f of x is less than or equal to f of b. So I'm gonna put a little pause. I'm not gonna worry about the end of this just yet, the likewise, because they're gonna repeat the definition, but for a minimum. I wanna take a look at how this works, and I'm gonna reference the graph, right? So pretend I have this interval from A to C, right? And you can see my function. You can make the sound effect, looks like that. Now I think visually you can see this is the local max. So let's talk about how on earth that sentence describes this situation. So it says, you have a local max at X equaling B if there exists an interval from A to C where B is in the middle of it somewhere. And it doesn't have to be exactly in the middle. It is for this graph, but A just, I'm sorry, B just has to be between A and C. So you can see right here, A less than B less than C. A is the leftmost point, then we hit B, then we hit C, right? We're always moving left to right or low to high on the X axis. All right, so for any value in this interval, for any other x value, maybe x would be here, x would be here, x could be here, here, it doesn't matter. For any x in the interval, and I'll pick one in just a moment. So for any x in the interval, f of x is less than or equal to f of b. So I think you can see f of b up here. So let's say my x was here and I picked f of x, right? I think you can see that f of x is less than or equal to f of b, all right? What if I pick my x here, and this was f of x? Well, it's still less than or equal to f of b. No matter where I put this x, my f of b will always be greater than or equal to f of x, or another way of saying that is f of x is always less than or equal to f of b. This is always the high point, and the high point means we have a maximum. So that's what it's saying. You have a max if you have some kind of interval a to C, where this is the high point. This is the highest Y value, relatively speaking. It means close enough to X equaling B inside this interval from A to C. All right, let me erase all this so this isn't super crowded. Okay. Now on the flip of that, you have a local minimum if there's a point in your interval, if there's a b in your interval such that for any x in that interval, f of x is greater than or equal to f of b, meaning this is the low point. All right, so this means that we have a low point, right, a low y value. Here, we have a high point, a max or a high y value. And again, visually, when we get the graphs, when we're given the graphs of the function, it'll be easy enough to see where the highs and the lows are. Some of the tricky parts are identifying what that x coordinate will be. Like, how do we know what the actual x value was? Was it two? Was it seven? Was it 3.78? And we're gonna use our calculators in this class to help us figure out maxes and mins. And when you get to calculus, you will literally, you will use calculus to determine maxes and mins. All right, so with that, we're gonna take a look at example six. Let me move this up. All right. So we have this cubic function hanging out here. Actually, let me scoot it up just a little bit more so I have all of that in view. Okay, so it says for the function f whose graph is shown in the figure below, find all local 
max and min. So that means find me the highs and the lows. And I'll, I'll come back in a moment to what, what I'm referencing when I say local. All right, so as I start to work through this, right, I see that I'm decreasing, then I'm increasing, then I'm decreasing. And just so we can reference what we were talking about in example six, I just wanna review up real quick. I know it wasn't officially asked for in here, but let's talk about increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals. And then I'll come back to local max and mint. All right, so in terms of increasing, as I move left to right, I can see that I went decreasing, increasing, decreasing. So I'm increasing in here. And if you remember from example, I, excuse me, example five, I only want the X coordinates. So it looks like right around here, I'm gonna just kind of guess that that's the ordered pair that I'm, I'm interested in, interested in, excuse me, that looks like it's negative one, two. And then I was increasing up to this high point and that looks like it's the ordered pair of one comma two. Be careful, the x-axis has a different scale than the y. In the x-direction, each square represents one unit, and in the y, they represent two. So if I look at the x-values, because all I care about is the x-values, it looks like I'm increasing from negative one to positive one, right, on this part of the x-axis. Okay? Now, I would be decreasing in these, over these other two intervals, and as I move left to right, Right, we have negative infinity and it stops at negative one. And then I start up again at one and I go over to positive infinity. So I'm decreasing from negative infinity to negative one and then one to infinity, okay? Now I'm constant, I'm never constant. There's no horizontal portion of my graph. So in terms of constant intervals, there are none, which is fine. I don't want you to think that every function has to have all three of these things. It can be any combo of them. But I think you'll give me, I went decreasing, increasing, decreasing, okay? So I just want to keep in mind, right? These are only x values. When we're talking about intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant, it's the x values we're interested in. Now, I want to contrast that to local max and mins, right? These are ordered pairs. So you owe me an X and a Y coordinate. All right, so let's see if we can figure this out. So I went decreasing, increasing, decreasing. We would see this as a local max. And why I call it local is because close to points around it, this is a high point, right? So if I go anywhere close around x equaling one, like if I look from zero to two here, this is a high point, all right? There's nothing higher than y equals two. Now why it's called a local max is because I think you'll give me, this is not the highest point on my graph. Locally it is, right? If I look just pretty close to x equaling one, it is a high point, but can you see, if you go a little further, do you see the y values actually get much larger than one, right? So this is a local max, relatively close to x equaling one, this is a high point. So I have one comma two here. And again, I wanna emphasize, this is an ordered pair. This is X comma Y. This is an interval. So this is a low X value to a high X value. And that's why I was writing here, only X values here, but these are X and Y coordinates. And we'll be making those balances in when we um, graph functions and talk about their traits. Sometimes we'll be talking about intervals and we'll only have X values. And sometimes we'll be talking about ordered pairs on your graph. And those are X and Y coordinates. All right, so it depends on context. All right, my local minimum, it looks like it's right here at negative one, two. Oops, excuse me, negative one. Actually, I'm seeing my typo. This should be negative two because it's below the x-axis. Right. And I think you'll see, or hopefully, let me, let me point this out. Notice the x-coordinates in these local maxes and mins, and that's what's playing a role in terms of where your function changes from increasing to decreasing. All right, so with that, we're gonna move to the next question that we're gonna do primarily on our calculators because I wanna show you how your calculator can help you find these highs and lows when I give you a function to analyze. All right, so I'll catch you in a few with example seven. See you guys, bye.